Every voice is supported by the Dallas Symphony Orchestra. Hear the DSO as they return to Carnegie Hall on Sunday, March 26th, with a program featuring Rachmaninoff and Tchaikovsky. Tickets available at carnegiehall.org. Listener supported. WNYC Studios. This is Every Voice with Terrence McKnight. It's a new podcast from WQXR that interrogates the culture of our classical music scene and looks at ways to make it more beautiful for all of us. In this series, we're looking at representations of Blackness in opera. And in this episode, we're delving deeper into Giuseppe Verdi's more of Venice, Othello. 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 My understanding of Othello is a one that is gullible. Bass Kevin Maynard. And can be fooled easily. His ego can be easily bruised. This is a character who um, faces a unique kind of human dilemma. Professor Uzi Brown Jr. Jealousy is something that plagues this man, and it increases because of the character like Iago, this dark figure. My name is Iago. Come on. I know how to talk back to him. I know how to to manipulate him, but I also know how to make him look better than he actually is. He's a facade of himself. He he looks good, but it's not good. It's nonsense. He's an actor. Otello is a black man who is a celebrated war hero, a general in the Venetian army, highly praised by son deeply hated by others, especially Iago, who thinks his boss is an empty suit, and he schemes to undermine him professionally and personally. In this episode, we're delving deeper into Otello's story, hear how jealousy, deception, and isolation brought him down, and how his status as a free black man with power became part of a myth that redefined black manhood as something to be feared and controlled, a myth that to this day results in unnecessary violence and heart-wrenching news headlines. This is Every Voice with Terrence McKnight. Many cultures, many voices, one people. Othello by Giuseppe Verdi is based on Othello, a play written by William Shakespeare around 1603 or 1604. And in both the play and the opera, Othello, or Othello, is the celebrated general who eloped with the Venetian senator's daughter, Desdemona. His subordinates were jealous of that relationship. After all, she had class, stature. She was the senator's daughter. And Othello was battle-tested. Folks loved him. He acts like such a powerful guy. I mean, he's got this trophy wife, and he just simply puts yes men around him all the time. He doesn't actually have somebody of competence like me because I'm 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 a tough handle. This dark figure, Iago, is constantly popping him with all kinds of reasons to become more intensely jealous. And, and, and it's often been said that jealousy is quite often born out of insecurity. Perhaps part of this may be insecurity, and it may be insecurity because of the fact that he is a man of color and maybe not totally believing in his own authority over those around him to do what he does. Can we just sit with that for a minute? He was insecure, but he was the boss. His wife was the senator's daughter, and she was completely head over heels for this man. What's wrong with this picture? First and foremost, he's a moron. 
That's Lemmy Pulliam, a tenor who sings the role of Otello. Despite being a celebrated war hero and, and general, he's a man that, even through all, all that celebration, is still alone. I think of it, maybe there was a little bit of animosity because Iago, as a, a true Venetian, he was having to take orders from someone he felt was inferior to him. That's nonsense. What pisses me off is people who manipulate their power, which Othello's done. He acts like such a good guy. He acts like such a powerful guy. But this is bullshit. He just simply puts yes men around him all the time. And then what does he do? He puts his fancy pants up in front of him and actually makes me subordinate to him. I'm, what is that? I don't get that. He'd be nothing without me. Iago is a figure who is constantly opportunistic. He's also jealous. And he is also wanting to weave his way in, uh, wiggle his way in, finagle his way in to become a more important person. It's easy for people to think that Iago's evilness is because he's been overlooked or he's missed his promotion. But in fact, that's not why I am evil. I am the embodiment of evil. And if we are supposedly born of an image of God, then I can only come from a vile and angry God. And my destiny is to exert and exercise that vileness to anyone in my path. And I simply do not believe on any level the goodness of humankind. I come from a black hole and I'm going to a black hole or an empty space, whatever you want to call that. This baritone Thomas Hampson, he's play acting. He's in character as Iago. That guy is scary in that role. This is a role game I've never done before. This is wild. People are gonna people are gonna cringe. You just have to run a, a disclaimer under the whole thing. He's actually a nice guy. No, this is a, this is Tom Hampson. He's he's acting. He's act no, he's acting. <laughs> I don't actually believe this, you know. <laughs> this is bizarre. This is really bizarre. I'm really I gotta take a shower. <laughs> We'll take a short break. Thomas is going to freshen up. And when we come back, we're going to bring director Peter Sellers into this conversation. And we're going to hear from Otello's bride, Desdemona. Stay with us. This is Every Voice with Terrence McKnight. <laughs> well, it's like Don Giovanni. say you were channeling me when you went into character. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I tell you, McKnight just gets on my nerves. I've had these, you know. <laughs> Every Voice is supported by the Dallas Symphony Orchestra. Hear the DSO live at Carnegie Hall as music director Fabio Luisi returns to the city for his first New York appearance since 2016, Sunday, March 26th. Tickets available at carnegiehall.org. High five! Give me five! Yeah! Actually, give me the Fiat 500 from Ford Motors. The Fiat 500, the smartest, sassiest, most seductive city car now available to test drive today in Ford Motors, Cromwell's Fort Road, Walkinstown. So go on, give me five. Give me the Fiat 500. See fortmotors.ie. It's officially Black History Month, and on Pod Save the People, we are celebrating Black culture, Black excellence, and the Black experience every month of the year. I'm Duran McKesson, activist, organizer, former teacher, and each week, me, Kaya Henderson, Miles Johnson, and D.R. Ballinger talk about the underreported news that you just didn't hear about. The news about race, justice, and equity that should have been the most important stories of the week, but weren't. But they are here. Tune in every Tuesday, wherever you get your podcasts, and make sure to follow us so you never miss an episode. When I first appear, I seem to be very much part of the group, very popular, um, and I'm muttering under my breath to a couple of other colleagues my abject hatred of Otello, my boss. Yes or no, do you want Otello dead? Yes. And why? Because he's a facade. He's a... He, he's gone too far. The level of admiration and his intoxicating personality as, as an example of virtuous humanity needs to stop. 
Then he walks in with his trophy wife. You know, come on. Everybody's going, wow, 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 you know. All that, come on. Thomas Hampson back with us as Iago from Verdi's opera Otello. Iago had a lot to say in this opera. He wasn't afraid to speak out against his boss to his peers. And just listening to him reminds me of some of the rhetoric we heard about the idea of Black leadership here in America not so long ago. Listen to Iago again with that in mind. The level of admiration and his intoxicating personality as, as an example of virtuous humanity needs to stop. You hear what I'm talking about? Sounds a lot like 2008. When I saw Otello, it jumped out at me that life was happening to and around him. He was like a bystander in his own life. The celebrated theater and opera director Peter Sellers produced Otello, and he said that production led him to a conversation, an argument, and then a collaboration with Nobel laureate novelist Toni Morrison. Morrison then accepted Peter's invitation to write a response to Shakespeare's play. She called her play Desdemona. Peter had an interesting take on Othello and on Shakespeare. It's a complicated story, Othello, because you really do feel that Shakespeare didn't have any black friends. And so he knew what this guy might be like performing for white people, but he had no idea who he was when he's alone. And so that play is the only Shakespeare play that has no soliloquies from the main character. He is alone for 10 lines, max, because Shakespeare just doesn't know how to be alone with him and what food he would eat and what music he likes and anything about a person. So Othello is a very strange animal. I can't stand that play. I hated it for years. And I got into a huge, huge, huge argument with Toni Morrison. And we spent three and a half hours one day just going around about it. And she said, no, it's not about him. It's about Iago. This is the language they are still using <laughs> to promote fascism in this country. This is the language they are still using, the coded racist language. And she said, and this play is about how that works. That coded language, that smug attitude that Iago expressed that Toni Morrison talks about, that's what I picked up when I saw Otello. It's the kind of language and attitude of superiority that still feels all too familiar. Listen to one of the guys on my team talk about how he feels as a young black man just navigating his life in America. Many times in my life, I think among other races and among my own people as well, I feel like I'm almost seen like a like a paradoxical weapon, like a like a blunt knife in the sense that I feel like I enter a room and I'm not seen for my full potential. Well, at the same time, man, people recognize my, you know, uh, alleged capacity for lust, lasciviousness, danger, harm, betrayal, brutality, and so on. And you know, man, it does feel like a paradox because on one hand, People might not readily assume that I could be intellectually competent. And in the same breath, people might be wary that I could be devising some sort of scheme or strategy to, you know, steal from them, take their girl. How am I at the same time, the oaf and the imbecile while being the greatest threat to one's safety and, and livelihood? And so it's this, it's this, really interesting feeling of I'm a tool. I'm, I'm not a person. And the thing that I the thing that I might be designed for or capable of, I'm not skilled enough or don't have enough f finesse to commit that act or do that thing or commit that atrocity. The invisibility and disregard for his full humanity that Dave expressed. Oh, that's not unique. Just talk to some of your black friends. They'll tell you. That's what goes missing for me with Verdi's Otello, that 360 view of Otello's deep humanity. But like Peter said, we can be pretty confident Shakespeare didn't have any black friends, so he could imagine only so much. And to go any deeper would not have been politically prudent. Queen Elizabeth and her predecessor, they weren't in the business of recognizing black humanity. But our society is much less homogeneous. 
So we've got opportunities to punch deeper into who Otella was so that the opera or the play feel less imperialist and less culturally insensitive. Mary Beth Diggle is someone who has played and sung the role of Desdemona in the play and in the opera. She reveals a side of Otello that we don't typically get. My husband is the most complete person I've ever met. He has lived so many different lives. I have the feeling he has had experiences that I will never have. Mary Beth Diggle, she'll join us in our next episode to give us a little more of Desdemona, plus director Peter Sellers, baritone Thomas Hampson as Iago, and tenor Lemmy Pulliam as Othello. Hi, I'm Mary Beth Diggle. In Verdi's Othello, I'm Desdemona. And that's who I'll be in the next episode of this very exciting podcast. Next time on Every Voice with Terrence McNabb. Da-da-da. Every Voice with Terrence McKnight is written and produced by Terrence McKnight, Tony Phillips, and David Norville. The research team includes Ariel Elizabeth Davis, Pranati Diwakar, Ian George, and Jasmine Ogist. This episode's sound design and engineering is by Alan Gofinski. And our original music was composed by Brother Jeremy Thomas, featuring Papa Tito Sompa on vocals and percussion. The project manager is Natalia Ramirez, and Tony Phillips is our executive producer. Elizabeth Nonamaker is the executive producer for WQXR Podcasts, and Ed Yim is the chief content officer at WQXR. This project is supported in part by the National Endowment for the Arts. You can find more information on the web at arts.gov. And special thanks to Met Archives for some invaluable research data. If you enjoyed this episode, please take the time to rate and review us on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen. I'm Terrence McKnight. See you. You're listening to Every Voice with Terrence McKnight.